Hey, welcome back to another episode of MGM Paints. I'm Jimmy, and today we're going to be painting a Van Sar Ganger from Necromunda. And you've never seen anything painted on this channel that hasn't eventually ended up in a battle report. So these are kind of previews, if you will, of what's to come. I'm certainly not trying to be something I'm not. I am not going to be of the quality of a Ninjan or someone like that, but I can do something that he can't, and that's grow facial hair. Now, the real reason that I did bring Ninjan up is because I was kind of looking at the internet at all the various slap chop, zenithal, grisai type of methods, and I did see where he made this video uh, about suck cut, which is actually hilarious because that's uh, Wayne's World is one of my favorite movies. I used to watch it all the time when I was a kid. And as such, I'm going to incorporate some of the techniques that he used in that video. So as always, we're going to start with a black primer. I used an automotive primer. This is just whatever you can find that has a nice matte finish. I used Duplicolor, which I found is very nice, although it is hard to find. For the mid-tone, instead of going with a light gray, I am going to go with a bone color, uh, specifically Army Painter's Skeleton Bone. And I'm going to take this, load this up on my brush, and I'm using a little piece of foam from a blister and I've just put that into the bottom of a base. I'm going to put just a small amount of water on this foam and this is important because a lot of people, you know, when you dry brush, typically you load the brush onto your, your dry brush, you wipe that off in a paper towel, but this tends to leave a chalky finish, especially when you're dealing with lighter colors. So getting that little piece of foam wet and just dabbing your brush into that, kind of wiping it off on your hand, that allows you to have a little bit of moisture to that brush and it's going to give you a smoother finish. So that's what we're going to do and I just again just a few drops of water onto this foam and you can kind of test that out on your hand. You want just a little bit of moisture there. Load your brush up and then you want to use something like a texture palette. You can use your hands. That is what I have done. Uh, you could even use your palette. Anything that has a little bit of texture to it to kind of wipe off that paint. The reason being is when you're using a paper towel, it will suck the moisture out of the brush, and that's what we don't want. So I'm going to go over this model, and I'm going to be turning it in all directions, giving it a highlight of Army Painter Skeleton Bone, which is a lighter mid-tone color. For the final highlight color, we are going to use Citadel White Scar, a color that is notorious for leaving that chalky uh, look behind. And again, be sure that you have your uh, little bit of moisture on your brush. And I tend to stay at a 45 degree angle while I am doing this. I have changed my dry brushes over uh, so I can move through this step pretty quickly. And I spend just a few minutes at a 45 degree angle moving around the miniature and giving it a good highlight. Now, one of the things that I picked up in Ninjan's video was, you know, kind of applying some more highlights where you want those to be prior to applying any speed paint or contrast paint. So I'm going to take just a few minutes to go over the model, kind of highlighting up some of the armor, some of the face, a lot of the places that I, I really may have missed with a dry brush, but I feel like that there should be some light there. I'm going to be picking those out as well. So uh, it's a, an extra step that takes just a few minutes, but I think the result is really good. It allows you to correct any chalkiness that you may find on your model, even though you, uh, you know, went through this process, but also just allows you to be sure that you're getting some of those punchy highlights uh, on the miniature. Now the first color that I'm going to use is from the Army Painter and it is Camo Cloak. It is a green camouflage type of color and I'm going to be going through all of the inner panels on this model. The pants and inside of the darker armor that they wear. So this uh, step took me a little longer than I thought just because there's a lot of small nooks and crannies that I'm trying to get this paint into. Uh, it probably took around 10 minutes to actually just kind of rotate this model around and find where I wanted to put this paint. And then when I did, it was a bit difficult to get it to where I wanted to go. So I had to switch up to kind of a detail brush, uh, which normally when I'm using speed paint, I'm, I'm using a much larger brush and covering a bigger area. Just be patient here. If you do spill over, it's perfectly fine. You do want to be a little more careful than usual when you're using this method because it is a little more difficult to correct. But you're going to find that a lot of this green bumps up against the armor panels, which we are going to paint with the Army Painter's Grim Black, and that is going to cover up any mistakes that you really make. 
And speaking of that, we are going to move to the Army Painter's Grim Black, and we are just going to go over the armor of this model, the chest plate. Uh, we do have some areas around the feet and along the hands, as well as some thigh pads and a butt pad as well. Using this Grim Black speed paint, you can really see after this paint dries where you put those initial highlights in. So this is really something that I'm going to start doing uh, as I move forward. I'm going to paint uh, some pieces of his gun this color as well. And if you happen to notice that there's some white spots in between where you've painted the camo cloak and where you've applied this on the armor, you can simply just splash a little bit of this paint in there. And this paint actually does very well acting as a shade or wash. It will blend in very nicely where the camo cloak and the grim black meet. Next, we're going to work on the skin pieces, and these guys uh, tend to look like they haven't seen the sun in a very long time. They're very pale, kind of like House de Lac, and what I'm going to use is the Army Painter's Runic Gray, and I'm just going to quickly go over the face, and some of these models are wearing a mask, so you don't have to worry about this bit on all of them, but I'm also going to grab his hands as well. Moving on, we'll take a look at the silver bits, and I'm going to go with the Army Painter's Chain Mail. Plate Mail Metal. Moving on to any bits that I want silver or gold, I'm going to use the Army Painter's Plate Mail Metal, and I'm just going to quickly go over anything that I want to either have that bronze type of color or be silver. This is going to include some pieces on the gun, these little grenades on the bottom for this particular miniature. I'm going to make this box down here at the bottom kind of a metal box as well. And then there's also going to be some bronze areas that I will turn bronze later on, but we're going to capture those as well. For the tubing, I'm going to switch up to the Army Painter's Hive Dweller Purple, and I'm just going to very quickly get the tubes here, the ones that connect uh, from his head, and also the ones that are coming from his uh, stomach, torso area, around to the back. This model also has something that is, you know, coming out of the back of their heads, almost like that they can, you know, inject into something like the Matrix. So while I have painted that top part a camo cloak, I'm going back on the underside of that and using the Hive Dweller Purple as well, just to give that a little bit of contrast. Now, when we made those initial highlights, you do want to pay particular attention to that tubing. If you really want that to kind of stand out and not be totally one color, go through and add your highlights in white uh, while you're in that kind of initial highlighting stage, and it will really make the speed paints or contrast paints that you apply pop. For those bits that we want to have that bronze type of look, I'm going to grab the Army Painter's Hardened Leather and I'm going to go right over the silver that we had painted earlier. This is going to be some of the connectors on the knees and on the elbows, as well as this piece coming up the uh, torso. Prismatic Bolt will do very good for the plasma effect that I'm going for, so I will apply that to his weapon. For some of the other details, like on the shoulder pads, on the knee pads, and some other areas, I am going to use the Army Painter's Gravelord Gray. And I really like Gravelord Gray. I'm also going to use this as a wash to some extent, where I will be going over all of the metal bits that we've done. So the grenades down on the bottom and the box, as well as the gun. Um, anything that I want to kind of have a worn type of metal look, you're going to achieve this with using Gravelord Gray almost as a wash. But I'm also going to use this to, again, get the shoulder pads, knee pads, and some other things that I wanted to have kind of a gray type of tone. And once this is complete, our model is pretty much tabletop ready. I think you could put this model on the table as it is, and it would look just fine. But if you want to take this a step further, and that is what I typically do, we're going to go back in at the very end and add some highlights. It takes around 10 minutes to do, but I think it is very worth the additional effort. Now, first starting where we did the armor plates and things like that in that grim black, I'm going to go back through with Army Painter's Uniform Gray and just quickly uh, do some edge highlighting to that to really make those stand out a little further. This will complement those initial highlights that we did in the very beginning and really just make that stand out. 
For the skin with this particular model, I'm going to use Vallejo Wolf Gray. And after the speed paint has dried, I'm just going to go back through and give some highlights to that as well. I'm going to be focusing on kind of the eyebrow, the cheek, the nose, and then kind of the top of the head as the character is bald. So we would be getting some light there. And then, you know, the knuckles on the fingers and, and, and things like that. Now you can take this step as far as you want. I do highly recommend highlighting the face or skin areas as well as the armor pieces as those tend to be the top two things that eyes are drawn to when you're looking at these miniatures. Now for the basing, I just use my standard recipe, which is a mahogany brown that is a Vallejo uh, color. I quickly just dry brush that on, and then I go in with a silver. In this case, I just happen to grab the Army Painter's Plate Mail Metal, and I dry brush that on a little lighter as well. You can add hazard stripes and all that at this point. I just decided to base this guy up as he is, pop him off and on, and this is the result. So all in all, this miniature took about 30 minutes to paint, which is a little longer than I would normally like to go, but getting some of these paints into the nooks and crannies where they needed to go was a bit challenging. I find that using this method is the perfect mixture of speed and efficiency, as you know, for me, I want to get things painted and on the table so I can play games. If you like this video, please feel free to give a thumbs up. I do all of this just for love of the hobby. I do have a coffee supporters club, which I will show on the screen now. It's by no means necessary, but if you'd like any more information on that, a link will be down in the description. Quite frankly, if you've watched my video this far, all I ask for is that you just give a like and consider subscribing for more content. These guys will see you in the hive very soon. Take care.